What's up guys, I'm Atori and today I'm going to show you my first furniture flipping attempt. I took this dresser and nightstand set that you see on your screen right now and turned it into this just using a little bit of paint. It's pretty impressive how much you can increase the value by just fixing some things and adding some paint. And today I'm going to show you the entire journey from buying and bringing the furniture home all the way to listing it to Facebook Marketplace at the end. So let's just get started. Alright, I'm about to go pick up this drawer and nightstand set. Uh, that I found on Facebook Marketplace. Listed for 50, I offered 40, they took it. I'll show you real quick. It's a little banged up, um, up top especially, but that's something that we can easily paint and uh, fix. So I'm about to go pick it up. So luckily all this fits inside my car. I'm able to put the seats up and it fits right in the back. And this was actually a very tight and perfect squeeze. I didn't measure beforehand, but just by luck, everything fit perfectly. It was a tight squeeze getting around the corner, but luckily I have a pretty wide door too. Uh, somehow I have a 48 inch wide door instead of the normal 36, which makes these things a lot easier. I laid down a tarp on the ground or a cloth so that I would not scratch up my floors. Alright you guys, so here we have the furniture I picked up. Uh, as you can see, it's in pretty good condition from afar, but once you get close, you can see that it does have some scratches a little bit of paint some more scratches so the plan for this is really just to first sand then paint then uh, apply a top coat then stage and then list to sell online so start off by just removing all of the drawers I'm gonna have to take out the hardware in order to have a flat surface that I can actually sand down. While I was doing this, I found these little chunks and these come from the glide guides in the back, which are broken and they're the reason the drawers aren't working that well. So the problem with the drawers was that the glide at the end of these had been completely busted and they're snagging so they can't push in all the way. That being said, I was able to find replacements on eBay and they'll get here in about 5 days. But in the meantime, I can still go ahead and sand, paint, everything. So the next step for me is to remove all of the drawer pulls. So to do this, I just use my drill, but you can definitely do this with just a normal hand screwdriver. The screws really aren't that long, so it wouldn't take much time for you to do it on your own. One thing that's helpful is to have a little jar or something so that you can keep all of them in there. To make sure you don't lose them. Now that that's all done, we can start sanding. I was using 180 grit sandpaper uh, because the top of my furniture did have some bubbles in some areas and I wanted to make sure that I was able to rough them out and get them more smooth. At the end, they weren't perfectly smooth, but they were a lot better than when I started. Outside of getting the blemishes out, you really just want to rough up all the surfaces so that the paint can adhere a lot better. So I'm doing the drawers and the furniture itself kind of separately, uh, doing them kind of like back to back. And I'm just giving it a quick little sand because this is just to get the paint better. We don't need it to be smooth or anything. We just want it to be roughed so that the paint sticks. The nightstands also had some issues. Uh, one of them had some paint on it that I was able to sand off and one of them had a couple bumps that I was able to make a little bit smaller. After I sanded and wiped down my surfaces, I was now ready for paint. So after all that sanding and wiping down, we can get to the painting portion of it. For this, I used the Rust-Oleum chalked paint. I saw really good reviews online for this paint and I really wanted to try it out. As you can see, I'm applying it to the drawers first. I just laid them flat so that I had a nice flat surface up top while I painted so that everything was able to settle pretty smoothly. So here I am done with my first coat. And as you can see, it adhered pretty well. You can still see through and see a lot of the black underneath. And this was a big oversight on my part. I think that going from black to white was a little bit too ambitious. And it really required many more coats of paint than I would have liked. Typically, this would only require two coats of paint, but I ended up doing four or even more in some sections because I kept on seeing the black shine through from the bottom. So uh, if you're going from light to dark, this should be pretty easy, but if you're going from dark to white, then this can be quite hard. 
and looking back I definitely should have applied a coat of primer typically with chalk paint you don't need any primer you can just go ahead and paint but uh, for such an extreme change as going from black to white I think that primer would have most definitely helped here and I do have some primer at home anyways I just uh, was being stupid by not pulling it out but now I know for next time next time if I want to go from dark to white I can just use some primer or I can just choose to avoid the situation by just uh, only sticking to dark to dark or, or light to light or uh, maybe changing it to some other colors just white is particularly hard by itself I'm also painting the tops of this gray but uh, while I was doing this I was also contemplating perhaps painting the entire furniture gray and then maybe just the drawer fronts white I think that would have been cool and that would have helped with the black that was bleeding through even though the gray is still pretty light uh, it's a lot harder to see the black underneath since I had to do so many coats of paint I did mess up in some areas there's some drips and some uh, areas where you can really tell the brush strokes but I think that's okay and I do plan on selling this for slightly lower than I would have because of this too it's my first time doing it it's not perfect but that's totally fine because I'm, I'm just learning here after all the paint was done uh, at least for the white parts I taped it up and I moved on to the tops I used normal painters tape for this section and then I started using the ash gray color for the tops also from Rust-Oleum chalked paint. I started off doing the sides uh, so that later I can move on to the top separately. And I also did multiple coats of the sides too. So I wanted to make sure that I had the tape there so that I could apply the coats quite heavily because uh, I want this paint to really show and I don't want any of the black showing through. While I was doing this, I had just a podcast playing in the background, which was actually quite nice. I was able to multitask a little bit, so it wasn't really as boring. I had quite a bit of fun doing this. However, with these three furniture pieces, it did get a little bit repetitive to <laughs> apply the gray and the gray and the gray, and sometimes I would forget which drawer I did the second coat on and, and things like that. So I would definitely recommend you try to figure out some sort of method for staying organized as far as what piece of furniture has had how many coats of paint already uh, because sometimes I did get a little bit confused because it did get so repetitive that I kind of forgot what steps I was on at some point but in the end it all turned out alright here you see me applying the second coat of paint on the dresser and this coat went on pretty easily I just let the first coat dry for a couple hours you really only need like 15 minutes from what I've seen but I figured I'd just let it dry for a good bit and uh, I'm applying the second coat right now. One thing that's important is to just go in one direction. Uh, you don't want you know mismatch brush strokes. And then we get to the best part of it all, which is peeling off the paint. It, this step is incredibly satisfying. You know, after seeing the messy edges for so long, you finally get to see nice clean edges. Now that our furniture is painted, the last step is to apply a top coat to that paint. I'm using the Rust-Oleum Chalked Matte Clear Top Coat. It is a clear top coat. So I'm using a sponge brush. I actually really like this brush. It doesn't leave any brush strokes behind and it is only a dollar from Home Depot. So you can just crack open a brand new one every time you use it. No need to worry about washing or anything after because it's so cheap. And uh, when I'm applying it, I'm just making sure I cover every single inch of the furniture and I'm trying to move in one direction as well. This top coat is a matte top coat which goes really well with the chalked paint underneath and between the two of them they work really great they kind of harden and feel really nice so I'm really comfortable with the quality of the result of the top coat as well as the chalk paint. The sponge brush is also great for getting into little corners uh, since it kind of can form and change shapes to fit it is actually great for getting these little trim areas which I found really helpful. I also had a couple other sized uh, sponge brushes lying around that I used for really tight spots. This is not necessary. I think I could have done it all with a bigger brush, but I figured I could just use a small one since I already had it. And for little sections like that trim, I thought it was really helpful. As far as the top coat goes, you only need one coat, and this is really just to give it that last shine and quality to the furniture that you're painting. 
since we're not trying to hide any under color or anything like that, one coat is definitely good enough. And now that that coat is applied, we can go back and apply our hardware to our dressers because they are close to ready for inserting back in. All right, so I messed up a little bit of my paint. There are some spots I didn't do such a good job covering the entire area or I didn't do enough coats because I was going from black to white. Uh, and I prematurely applied the top coat so and then afterwards I came back I touched up some areas and then I have to re-top coat the areas I touched up <laughs> however it is very very difficult to see what areas you touched up um, and so I'm using a flashlight in order to see how glossy areas are um, it's very hard because everything is matte <laughs> so I'm going to show you how, how I've been doing it you see there's some areas here that I apply the top coat. You see there, it's a different shade. I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but there it's a different shade than there. So I've been going back and reapplying. Oh, I need some more top coat, one second. But here there's a little spot so I can go back and, and pick it up here. There we go, little by little. I hope I'm not missing any areas that are too big. Um, I'm already thinking about discounting this uh, this item on Facebook Marketplace because I have messed up quite a bit. But that's okay because this is my first time doing it. I've learned a lot and we are still going to make a profit. Alright, now that we're done with the whole painting and top coat process, I'm going to go ahead and get it ready for staging and pictures. Even though the drawers are not fixed yet, it's still good enough for the pictures and I want to take advantage while the light is good outside, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I think staging is a great opportunity for you to increase the value of your posts on Facebook Marketplace. So many people just have a very messy basement look uh, and having this set up nice in a way that someone can actually visualize what it would look like in their bedroom it can really increase the value. Alright, so here it is in its stage state. I added some random knickknacks I have lying around so that people can kind of visualize this in their own space. I try to bundle things into different groups and areas. Um, and uh, this is how it turned out. This is how I'm going to photograph it. I'll also include pictures without all this stuff on it so that people can better visualize what it actually looks like. So. I'm going to take pictures now. These are the pictures I took. As you can see, I have some with the staging on them, but then I also have a lot without it and the furniture pieces themselves individually. I think it's important for people to see all angles of the furniture that they're buying so that they're not wasting your time when they come over and decide not to get it. All right, so these drawers back here have a little problem where they don't go all the way in. And that is because the glide guide in the back is broken in many of them. As you see here, if I pull this out, and try to push it back in, it won't go all the way back in. You have to kind of tilt it down and then pull it back up. So I was able to find replacement uh, glide guides for the back of them that we have here. I bought three of them. I think I might need more actually, so I might have to wait a little bit longer and wait for those to come in. So replacing the glide guide was actually quite easy. Uh, all I did was I Googled the model and I found some 3D printed versions online for, that were quite cheap. And then I unscrewed the old ones and screwed in the new ones and they worked perfectly. I think the 3D printed material is a lot stronger than the injected plastic material that they had before. So these are a lot better than when I first got them. And as you can see, they fit in and they work perfectly. So when selling something online, one of the most common questions you get is regarding dimensions. So that being said, I think it's very important to let the buyer know the exact dimensions of what you're selling. I decided to go into Photoshop and add all the dimensions for height, width, and length to this image so that people know exactly the size of what they're buying so that they can know whether it fits in their space or in their car before messaging you and wasting your time. So I think this little step is very helpful. So if you know some graphic design skills, definitely put them to use right here. As always with my projects, I like to go over the mistakes at the end so that you can avoid them. One big mistake I made was trying to go from black to white. 
I did not realize or perhaps I underestimated how many coats of paint it would require to go from black to white and I really should have used some sort of primer before applying the paint. Chalk paint is great in the sense that generally you don't need primer or anything to put on it but in my case since I was going from such a dark color to such a light color I really think some primer would have helped or just choosing another color to go to but uh, anyways, I learned my lesson for next time. I got to be conscious of my co piece's original color so that I can improve the quality of the final product. Another mistake I made was with paint smearing and having paintbrush strokes in my paint. This is my first time using chalk paint and I'm totally getting the hang of it still. And I feel like by the end of it I was a lot better, but in the beginning I was not too great. So I had some areas in my piece where I definitely messed up a little bit. But that's totally fine because I'm just now learning the technique. And I'm still excited to have completed the project even though it took a lot longer than I had anticipated. Lastly, I would recommend that you add these little non-slip pads to the bottom of your furniture if you're doing things indoors. I found that I was moving the furniture around a lot and I didn't really like having to be too careful so then I just got these little um, slip pads for furniture to put under the legs at the dollar store and that really helped me move around my furniture in my apartment without really scratching up the floors at all. And that's it. That's my first experience trying furniture flipping. I hope it gives you a little bit of confidence to try it out yourself if you're interested. And if you want to see me do this more in the future, please subscribe and like this video. See you guys. So all in all, I thought this was actually a very fun process. It is very fun to, you know, even hunt for the furniture. I like looking and then, you know, really restoring it, bringing it back to life. When I got this piece originally, it was all scratched up and the drawers were broken and I was able to fix the drawers, fix the scratches by applying paint over them and really give new life into this furniture, which is amazing. Uh, but all in all, we have $40 invested in the furniture itself. We used another $40 worth of paint and then about $20 worth of hardware for the glide guides and then lastly about $15 worth of paint brushes. So all in all I'm $115 into this project and selling for $375 which lets us have a $260 profit which is really not bad for a weekend's worth of work. I also did mess up a lot which made it a lot slower and I feel like if I were to do this again I could get this project done a lot quicker perhaps in, even in a single day. I also think it's worth mentioning that I don't have a yard or anything to do this and I did this all in my living room. I do have a pretty big living room though, but I feel like a lot of people can do this despite their limitations of space, especially if you have a basement or a garage. This is very simple for you to do at home. I was very excited to try furniture flipping because this niche on YouTube is absolutely blowing up right now. With the, with the whole situation that we got going on, a lot of people are looking for side projects that they can do and raise some money that way. And furniture flipping is very natural, very easy, and has a very low barrier to entry. Anyone can give it a try. And there's great channels out there like Furniture Flipping Teacher, she actually does very informational videos on how to do it. And there's other people doing some things too, like Mission Side Hustle is flipping a lot of furniture. And there's a new guy on the blog called Furniture Flipping Newbie who's having a lot of success very early on. So I'm very excited about this space on YouTube and I think it's very great and eco-friendly. It is crazy how we took something that was busted, broken drawers, scratches, and brought it back to life completely with just some paint and new hardware. And I think this is a great way to um, you know, really add value and prevent something from ending up in a landfill and while making profit too. I'll definitely be doing this in the future so make sure to subscribe to see what I do next and like the video if you liked it.